Hello, family. How are you today? I pray that you and your family are still well, uh, taking all necessary precautions to be safe. Uh, pray that you're getting along. Being in the house all day with one another has been a change for a lot, but uh, I guarantee you it can help in your growth process. Uh, it has, for me, uh, it has shown me some things that maybe I need to, to get in check. So uh, keep praying for me as well, because I tell you what, uh, this has been quite the challenge, the slowdown, the, the pace, but uh, God is working on me. Uh, want to say hi to all of you that, that may not be members of New Hope. Uh, we want to say thank you for coming and hanging out with us on this evening. Uh, I pray that something will be said or done that will help encourage you in your walk, uh, strengthen your resolve to live for Christ. And if by chance you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, I pray that something will be said today that will encourage you to, to open your heart and give your life to Christ. Believe me, it's worth it. But on tonight, as we prepare to just share just a little bit about, uh, about God's Word, uh, I pray that it helped you the same way that it helped me. Uh, I'm going to ask that you would uh, turn with me over to Psalms chapter 30, verse 5. But we're going to read 1 through 5, but we're going to focus our attention on verse 5. So if you will turn with, in your Bibles to Psalms number 30, verses 1 through 5, with our focus being on five. And as you turn, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for all that you've done. We thank you for, for continuing to be with us, to strengthen and encourage us, Father. We thank you for, for sharing your love uh, with us, Father, even though we, we don't deserve it. Now, uh, Father, I pray now for those that are going through, uh, not only through this pandemic, Father, but Lord, there are so many uh, different things that are, have come about because of it. Folk have lost their jobs, Lord. Uh, some have become ill themselves. And unfortunately, even in, even in our church family, uh, there has been uh, uh, death among us. But Lord, we still trust you. And, and we still know, Father, that ultimately you are in complete and absolute control. So Father, bless our time tonight, Father, as we, as, as we delve into your word. And uh, Father, allow it to, to, to bless us. We love you. We do trust you. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Well, family, Psalms 30 and 5, uh, out of the NIV, it reads, For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. Now I'm going to read for you verses 1 through 5 out of the King James. It reads, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endured but for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Well, family, with all of the chaos that's going on in our world right now, many of us, are, I pray, are clinging to this particular truth that's in Psalm 30 and 5. This long-proven truth family, reminds us that our most painful, frightful, and difficult seasons won't last. God's goodness will eventually break through like the morning dawn, resulting in resounding joy. And such joy, in fact, that it'll almost be as if darkness never failed. As questions and uncertainties abound, I pray that we find comfort, family, in the depths of God's promise in this particular word that was penned first by a man by the name of David. He was Israel's second king. And at a surface level, reading this particular passage of Scripture certainly bolsters the heart, but what do these often quoted words 
truly mean and, and how can we apply the promises that they convey to our current challenges? Well, family, I want you to know today that night always comes before the dawn. Initially, David, he suffered greatly, and, and I'm certain his trials felt anything but temporary. Though he'd been anointed as Israel's ruler at a young age and had been proclaimed as a hero, he spent nearly a decade fleeing from a tyrannical king named Saul. David hid in caves, and at one point, fearing imminent death, he feigned insanity. And I imagine he didn't know who he could trust or wondered if he'd be living as a fugitive forever. Yet, though his circumstances were far from joyful, he still found joy in his cause. And he found joy in none other but God. So family, when Saul learned a priest had offered David aid, he, he had 85 men of God slaughtered. Can you imagine the depth of, his, of David's sorrow and the depth of the guilt that David may have felt? Yet in response, he wrote in Psalms 52 and 1, Why do you boast about your, your crimes, great warrior? Don't you realize God's justice continues forever? Or if it was translated more literally, literally forgive me, it says, don't you realize the Hesed, that is God's steadfast and his merciful and his fierce and faithful love, it endures forever. And he continued in verse 8, but I am like a green olive tree in the house of God, flourishing and ever fruitful. I trust in the Hesed of God forever and ever. And some of you may be thinking, Pastor, what do these words mean for me today? Well, let me share something with you. Just in case you didn't know anything about uh, the olive tree, the olive tree's roots, they grow long and they grow strong. And what David is saying here, that in spite of all of my circumstances, in spite of everything that's going on around me, my faith in God, my trust in God is just like the roots of an olive tree. They're long and they're strong. And I'm going to hold on to the promises of God. I'm going to hold on and be faithful to his word. And just like David, you and I too can be faithful to God's word and we can trust that God will see us through even this pandemic. David family found joy in the midst of grief by trusting in the goodness of God. And he's challenging you and I today to trust in God even through the challenges of COVID-19, to trust in God even through the challenges of the illnesses and the joblessness, trust in God even through the isolation. You can still trust in God even in the midst of any and everything you're going through, especially right now. Family, amid David's most terrifying circumstances, David declared beforehand, in essence, my weeping won't last forever. Come morning, God's dawn will break through with joy. Family, David was in the midst of running from Saul. David was in the midst of hiding from, 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 from soldiers that were trying to kill him. David was in the midst of struggle. David was in the, in the midst of of loss. He lost everything that he knew. He had a family he lost connection with. He had prestige, but he lost it in the midst of everything that was going on. And But yet he still held on to the faithfulness and the trust and the love that God had for him. You know, family, as I thought about it, in Psalms 30 and 11, it says, you turned my wailing into dancing. You remove my sackcloth, symbolic of weeping, and clothe me with joy. That's verse, verses 11 and 12. Family, that's, that's, that's letting me know that after David went through all that he did, after David's challenge was over, after all of the struggle and the suffering was over, the morning came for David. David realized that through his test, he had a testimony, and he was able to pin these words in, 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 in Numbers, in Psalms number 30. 
See, family, David did not write this poem in the midst of his struggle. He wrote it years after, but David still found joy in the midst of his struggle. And like David, we may struggle with our current circumstances, but God understands. He knows each of us, and yet he's still working out our nighttime difficulties and bringing us to a morning experience, and we can find joy through all of this. For those of you that are sharing with us uh, from New Hope, you know that now it's 12 o'clock. It's our time that we would normally be praying. So family, I, I, just, I, I just beg your pardon if, if you would pray. I pray that you are continuing your prayers of faith. Con your, I pray that you're continuing your walk with God through, this, through these circumstances. But family, let me, share, let me share with you something because I need you to understand this, that God knows each of us. And yet he's still working out our nighttime difficulties. He's bringing us to a morning experience. And we can still find joy through all of this. Because our joy, family, is not found in this world. But our joy is only found in the Lord. So, family, let me just help you out with something. Because I think some of you fail to understand how God really works. But I pray that you hear me when I say this. Our joy is made greater by our nighttime experiences. I know some of you are saying, Pastor, I don't understand what you're saying. Well, let me say it one more time for you. Our joy is made greater by our nighttime experiences. Let me expound on that for a little bit and help you out. See, I remember going through some, some, I remember going through homelessness. I remember not having transportation. I remember not having a job. I remember being locked up. I remember going through nights and days without food. I remember going through issues of not being able to pay bills, not having someone around me that cared. I remember those times, but it was through those circumstances. It was through the fact that I was homeless. When I got a home, I appreciated even more. It was through not having a job and being able to pay my bills that when I found a job that I was able to better appreciate the fact that God had not only given me a job, God had not only given me a home, God had not only given me what I needed, but I appreciated the fact that what God gave me, I thanked him for it even the more because I've been without. Let me share something with you. The word says, I've learned how to be content and I've learned to, to be content with little, and I've learned to be content with a lot. And because I've become content with a little, I appreciated the fact when God gave me more. See, family, God is sharing with you today, I may be allowing you to go through some things. I may be allowing this pandemic to over, overtake the world, but let me share one thing with you. God did not miss. God has not been caught unawares. God knows what we're going through. He has allowed what we're going through to come, I believe, to bring us to a better morning. Through these circumstances, through what we're going through, God is going to allow us to wake up in the morning. And He's going, and when we wake up in the morning, we're going to appreciate what we had. We're, we're going to stop professing and complaining about what we don't have. We're going to appreciate the freedom. We're going to appreciate the little. We're going to appreciate our family. We're going to appreciate that little job. We're going to appreciate what God has given us all the more because our nighttime experiences allowed us to see what we had and, and, and how we've taken it for granted. And when we wake up in the morning, I believe without a shadow of a doubt, we're going to say, Lord, I thank you for bringing me through. You've taught me how to appreciate what you've given me. So, family, let me share something with you. God's anger and God's favor, those, those total opposites, family, they're together as one. Let me, how, how can you say that, Pastor Jones? Well, I'm glad you asked me that, too. Because in God's anger, he's working toward his good. Case in point, I remember as a young man, uh, when I'd act up and I'd do some things that I shouldn't have done, my mama used to, she used to grab her belt and she'd tell me to bend over. And, and then she had the audacity to tell me, son, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. 
I don't know about you, but I never understood that as a child because getting that belt on my hind part, that hurt. And, 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 and that didn't feel good. And looking at her, it didn't seem like it hurt her at all because she, wasn't, it, she didn't have a problem sitting down after she whooped me. She didn't have a problem uh, going around and doing what she wanted to do after she whooped me. But I couldn't sit down. I couldn't walk right. And then on top of that, I couldn't even go outside. But one thing that I have learned, the older I have gotten, the smarter my mother has become. And I realized that when she was trying, when, when I was trying to do wrong and she was trying to correct me, that what she was trying to do was, was make a way for me to have better tomorrows. She wanted to keep me from the mess. She wanted to keep me a, a humble. She wanted to keep me appreciative of what I had. And, when, what, and what God, I believe, is doing today God is telling a, not just our nation, but God is telling our world, listen, I've allowed what's been going on far too long, and I am, and I am dealing with it in the way that I see best. And guess what? At the end of the day, your dawn, your morning is going to come. And when it comes, we're going to say, Lord, while we still may not understand it all, while we still may be in grief, of some of the things that, that we've lost, guess what? I appreciate you because you kept me in the midst of my storm. God's family is not, is not angry, so angry with us that he doesn't love us. God is just showing his discipline. He's showing us his chastisement. And guess what? At the end of the day, family, when we wake up in the morning, we're going to say, Lord, I thank you. So family, let me just share this, let me just share this last thing with you. But how do we live for the hope? of the morning. Well, as I close on this family, for many, a time of weeping is here right now. Perhaps a family member is battling an illness. Perhaps a family member of one of your loved ones, they've already gone on to glory. Maybe you've lost your job. You've been furloughed from your job or an adult child has turned their back on you or they've turned their back on the faith through all of this stuff. And as a result, your circumstances, family, they feel dark. And as if, as if the night has landed for good. But scripture family promises us that that's not true. Night may linger. Night may hang around and it may tarry for a while. But I promise you, according to God's word, dawn is coming. And it's going to burst forth with hope. It's going to burst forth with, with, with light. And it's going to burst forth with light. And when it does, the joy that will enter our souls, such joy that we won't be able to keep it to ourselves. And we're going to shout and we're going to dance and we're going to sing God's praises. Every tear will be but a distant memory, a memory that not only will never be, that will never dampen our celebration, but will in fact make it all the sweeter. So when we think about what we've come through, we're going to shout hallelujah. When we think about all of the trials and the tribulations, of COVID-19, we're going to say hallelujah. And why does joy come in the morning? Because the night, family, this COVID-19, this coronavirus, it will have passed and God's grace will fall afresh with the dawn of the new day. So family, I want to encourage you today, hold on. Hold on to the truth of Psalms 30. Hold on to the truth of God's word and stand like a watchman, anxiously awaiting the break of dawn because family, it's on the way. I want to encourage you knowing that, that God's new dawn is on the way. And according to his word in the Old Testament, it says that new mercies come with each and every morning. So, family, I want you to rejoice in the fact that God has shown mercy on your life. If you're looking at this video, that means God still has favor over your life. God has, still has plans for your life. And I want to encourage you to seek his face. Seek what he has designed for your life. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. We've gotten so busy prior to all of this that we didn't do what God would have us to do. But God has given you and I an opportunity to dig in, to, to, to pray, to get closer to him. So I want to encourage you, please, stay, stay true to your commitment to him. Stay true to, your, to his word. And know this without a shadow of a doubt. God loves you. He loves me. 
and there's nothing you can do about it. How do I know that? Because we're getting ready to celebrate one of the most magnificent times in, in Christian history. It started off with the fact that Jesus was going to die. He had to die for you and I. And when he died, it says that his stripes were for our healing. He was beaten for our sin. But on that glorious third day morning, he rose again with all power in his hand. And because he rose again, we can celebrate. Even now, we can celebrate what God has done in our lives. So family, thank you so much for hanging out with me just for a few moments. I want to, I want to just let you know as well. On this coming Sunday, we're going to have a special presentation for, for our Easter for our Easter celebration. Be, be, be looking out uh, for additional information coming to you uh, within the next uh, couple of days. Uh, I pray that you'll hang out with us on Sunday just for a little while. Enjoy what God is, is, is going to do on this coming Easter Sunday. I pray that you continue to be well. Stay safe. Stay in. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for all that you've done. Thank you for the comfort of knowing, Father, that even while we're in the midst of all of this, that joy will come in the morning. Now, Lord, I press upon you to please hear your people when they call on your name. Hear and not only hear, according to your word, Father, as we call, heal the land. Now, Father, we love you and we do trust you. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.